At one time I was really into Antarja as a woodworking media and I made quite a few projects that I sold at craft shows. I haven't done a craft show in quite a while. I had some Antarja boxed up from those shows. For some reason I didn't list it online mainly because some of those, pro some of those projects were big and they would be very expensive to mail. But I went through the items I had took some, took uh, basically all of them to my retail store, which I opened in January. And then I listed the smaller ones online. And among the items that I listed online was an Antarja butterfly. This pattern came out of a 2006 Creative Woodworks and Crafts magazine. Probably not available anymore, but you can get plenty of Antarja patterns online. I decided to make this pattern and that's what this video is going to be all about making in fact in this case two entire butterflies so I, I made several copies of the pattern and uh, I'm getting a lot of reaction to purple heart and so I'm going to try this pattern calls for a medium dark and a light wood to contrast with each other and then a dark wood in the middle for the actual body of the butterfly. I'll make that out of walnut. I get plenty of that but it calls for a half inch thick material and uh, I don't have any half inch on on hand in any of those in either either of those woods but I have plenty of four quarter on hand so I'm going to take these four quarter pieces of purple heart and maple. You can see how nicely they contrast with each other. I'm going to take these over to the thickness planer and plane them down a half inch and go from there. Earring protection is a must when you have a thickness planer. The other must is a dust collector. Shop vac will not give you enough volume. You need a dust collector if you have a thickness planer. Otherwise, you will be up to your knees in sawdust. Truly, not an exaggeration within a very short time. It doesn't take all that long to fill up a bag from the thickness planer. pattern had these two tails, I don't know what you call them, coming down from the butterfly. It's shown as an exotic butterfly. Uh, this is Illinois, there's nothing exotic around here. So I made the pattern and when I, I cut those parts off, I'm not going to make them. So what I need to do now is to lay out these dark pieces on the purple heart and the light pieces on the maple. All right, I had an idea. I don't know if this is going to work, but uh, you'll find out when I find out, I guess. I took the maple and the purple heart, used painter's tape to attach them back to back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack cut these. Now, what it will end up doing then is I will have one pattern where the Dark is on the outside and the light is on the inside and then another pattern which is the opposite, I think. This is, I'm trying to do things in 3D and my brain, I'm not sure works in 3D. But anyway, if it doesn't work, I've got one good pattern. Eh. Anyway, let's try it, see what happens. This is kind of a long piece, awkward to cut on the scroll saw. I'm going to cut it down the middle first before I go to the scroll saw. Okay, I cut the pattern in half and uh, moved over to the scroll saw. Got a blade tension in there. It's a number nine Pegasus modified geometry blade. It's going to have to work this afternoon because with that stack, that's about a, that's an inch thick. The maple is soft maple, but Purple Heart is. Pretty hard. I've worked with it before. This particular scroll saw, it's a jet scroll saw. I've replaced the upper and lower mounts with Pegasus. I like them quite a bit. They're very handy. You just tighten them by hand. Uh, and I have a foot switch 
to stop and start and I have a lighted magnifier on top because my vision isn't what it was years ago. Well, let's give this a try. That wasn't too bad. I was wondering how difficult it would be, but not bad. Let's make this cut between the upper and lower parts of the wing. So far, so good. Let's make the long cuts first. That's interesting. I didn't put painter's tape over the whole pattern, so this is going to be a little more challenging. Those pieces are not close together. This is going to be kind of like a big jigsaw puzzle, so I put two sides, or two copies of the pattern off to the side there, and as I cut these, I'm going to lay them on top where they belong on the pattern, so that later on I know exactly what goes where. Lesson learned. All the way around and all the way across in the stack cutting. Okay, there's the two pattern pieces that I put on the counter. As you can see, this is the the way the pattern shows it with the dark on the inside and outside and the light in the middle. But the opposite is the one that I cut because I'm stack cutting. And uh, so far I think that looks okay. And so far the patterns are cutting accurately. So let's keep on going and see what happens. All right, one side is done. And it came out uh, pretty good. As you see where I've got it laid out on the pattern. And this one here, the lower one, is the, according to the pattern, with the dark on the inside and outside and light in the, me the middle. This is the opposite. Um, I could reserve judgment on that until after it's finished, but I think it's going to be okay. Now, I had ran into a few problems, not problems, but it, it made cutting a little bit more difficult where the two pieces weren't stuck together real well with the painter's tape. So what I'm going to do here is, with this second side, you can see the painter's tape on the outsides, but not in the middle. I'm going to put clear packing tape over the pattern in this case, and that should take care of the problem and it should make it much easier to cut the other side. We'll find out soon. All right, I covered the second side with clear packing tape. Put a new blade in there. As before, it's a number nine Pegasus modified geometry. Hear that? That tells you the blade is nice and tight. I started the this hole here, hole, this, this cut here with the uh, number 12 blade. Another scroll saw to save a little wear and tear on the number nine. But that is doing pretty good. I'm going to follow the line pretty closely here on the inside because that's where it's going to meet up with the butterfly's body. Okay, now let's start uh, Start on the outside.
new blade definitely makes a difference. Once you get much experienced scroll sawing, you'll be able to tell the blade just starts to take more pressure to make it cut. And once that happens, you want to replace it. If you keep going, it can do a couple things. It can burn the wood, or what it can do is it can break. It's a little disconcerting when you're moving right along and the blade breaks. There's the patterns. I'm putting the second set in there now. All the parts are cut. You can see the two intarsia with the light and the dark sections flipped. I think I like them both. I don't know. I'll see what they look like when they're finished. Now they need to go into a packer. I cut out the uh, the butterfly bodies out of walnut last night didn't show that but there wasn't much to show I found some ball, quarter inch Baltic birch plywood I attached the patterns to the plywood I'll cut out the outline and then I can start some gluing now I know from experience that uh, well if you look at this one here closely you notice that this is the pattern I cut these from but it the pieces fit but not quite and the reason is that every time you make a cut you lose the width of the saw blade to that cut so the final part of the final intarsia piece is going to be a little bit smaller than the pattern at least well the center part with the butterfly body will pretty much line up because you cut only on the outside but these others already made all those inside cuts are going to be smaller so I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to cut it I only need to cut it on the outside obviously but I will cut it on the inside of the outside lines if that makes any sense so in other words normally you would cut probably maybe right on the line or maybe slightly to the outside I know this is going to be undersized so I'm going to cut on the inside of these lines and see how that lines up. It may still be a little large. I can always go back and do some sanding or a little bit of uh, trimming on the scroll saw, but I haven't done this in a long time, and I don't think I made those corrections when I was scroll saw when I was scroll sawing Atarja earlier and didn't know any better. So let's move over to the scroll saw, put in a small blade, and start and cut out these two backer boards. I'm going to glue on this pattern. I thought the instructions for temporary bond, but I guess it's more temporary than I wanted. This crazy is not my favorite method of attaching patterns, but it seems the appropriate one for this particular use. I just got to get used to exactly how much spray to use and so to let it dry 3 to 5 minutes. Maybe I'll go on all the time. Scroll saw is about the only tool where you can get this close to the blade and not worry about it. One of the reasons it's going to work with is it's a safe tool to use and as long as you're being paying attention to what you're doing you don't have to worry about I mean, kind of major injury, injury, you might be able to cut yourself slightly, but that would be about it. 
especially I'm using the foot switch, so if for some reason my finger would come in contact with the blade, I would be able to react by quickly taking that foot off the switch. That's it. Let me did it right. The, the one good uh, broke off one of the feelers. That's all right. It was easy enough to uh, peel that off, that's for sure. So there we go. There's the backer board. And I'll glue this feeler back on. And uh, I think it'll be all right. And then we'll take the parts over to the workbench and start some gluing. I glued the antenna back here. I don't think it's going to be crucial anyway. I've got my white glue. I like using that. It dries clear. So if you get a little squeeze out sometimes, uh, which you will, it's not necessarily going to show. I'll start with the butterfly body in the middle here. And put some glue on the bottom. Now, it's a matter of just adding a little bit at a time. If you'll remember, I kept those, all those segments on top of a copy of the pattern so I knew, so I knew exactly what I got where. And so right now, I'm going to be able to just take them like this, move them over, and glue them into place. Now sometimes with intarsia you want to shape the pieces, but in this case I don't see any need, there's no need to shape. I'm just going to uh, make sure there's no Tear out on the back, put a little bit of glue on there, put this one in place. I'm going to try not to drop these things on the floor. And just work your way like a kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. I don't see any need to glue in between the pieces with a backer here. That'll hold everything in place nicely. Okay, that's the inner innermost layer. Let's move on to the next. This is where it starts to look good. You got that contrast in there. Colorful. Now this one is going to be the outside. And I want to just touch the edges of that so that it won't you won't have any sharp edges. Continue to work on that and we'll take another look at it in a few minutes. I've got all the parts glued onto that one. I'll go in a little closer, you can see that the backer board is a little bit bigger than the Atasha parts. You can see it a little bit on the edges of those wings. Uh, after the glue dries, I'll go back in, I can trim that on the scroll saw with a small blade. 
uh, overall it's starting to look pretty good and um, I'll cut out a backer board for the second butterfly and then put that together. I used the scroll saw to trim some of that excess off the edge of the backer board. It looks good I think now. You can see it close up. I took a piece of sandpaper and rounded over the edges. took the sharpness off the corners. You can see the back there. And uh, sharp, I ran, rounded over the corners there too. I think that looks good. The second version with the lighter color on the outside and inside, I finished gluing up a few minutes ago. The two butterflies are done, they are finished. I'll close in a little bit. There's the one with mostly lighter colors, the maple with the purple heart, and the other one with the purple heart is the main color, and the maple is the backup. I like the way they turned out. I've been in the entire a long time. This is fun. I plan on doing more.